Hello and welcome to this first of four tutorials on circle theorems. In this tutorial we'll look at what a circle theorem is, two circle theorems and recap on some angle facts. Now before we start it is important to know the properties of a circle as these will be our key words referred to in exam questions. I'll keep them here for reference. So what are circle theorems? Well, before we look at circle theorems, let's look at the word theorem. A theorem is simply a statement proven to be true. So that means circle theorems are statements associated with circles which are proven to be true. Here, there are seven circle theorems. This one is not a circle theorem but it is an important key fact that will help us answer a range of exam questions. All the circle theorems are proven to be true. This means it's important to memorize all of these statements or circle theorems as they will form part of our reasoning. So let's look at our first circle theorem. This circle theorem states that the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. In this example, you can see we've formed an angle at the center using two radii. This made 126 degrees. We've then formed another angle at the circumference, making an angle of 63 degrees. So let's move the angle at the circumference and see what happens. No matter where we move that angle at the circumference, it still remains to be 63 degrees. Now, let's change the angle at the center. As you can see with this demonstration, the angle at the center still remains to be twice the angle at the circumference. A nice way to spot this theorem is to look for an arrowhead but it does not always look like an arrowhead. Here you can see we're using the same principle. We have two radii making the angle at the center and these connect to form our angle at the circumference. Here you can see our shape is different but the circle theorem is still the same. So, we have our first circle theorem. So let's apply it to a question. This question states that points A, B, D are points on the circumference of a circle. We have a center O. The angle A to O to B is 124 degrees. We're asked to find the angle Y and we must give a reason for our answer. Now, you have our first circle theorem, so why not have a go? Press pause if you need. From our circle theorem, we know that the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So we know angle ADB is 124 divided by 2, giving us 62 degrees. So therefore, we know angle Y must be 62 degrees because the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. Now let's try another exam question. This question states, A, C, D are points on the circumference of a circle with a center O. We know A, D, C is 84 degrees. We're asked to find angle X and we must give reasons for our answer. Why not give this a go and press pause if you need. Using our circle theorem, we know angle AOC must be 84 degrees multiplied by 2, giving us AOC being 168 degrees. 
This is because the angle at the centre is twice the angle at the circumference. Now we know angle AOC is 168 degrees, we can find angle X. Simply, 360 subtract the 168, giving X to be 192. Because angles around a point sum to 360 degrees. Now let's look at another circle theorem. This circle theorem states that the opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral always sum to 180 degrees. Here I'll demonstrate with some numbers. You can see I've colour coded the opposite angles and they will always sum to 180 degrees. As I change the angles at the circumference, the opposite angles still continue to sum to 180 degrees, no matter where I put these points on the circumference. It is important to remember that a cyclic quadrilateral gets its name from the fact that the corners or the vertices of the quadrilateral must be on the circumference. Only when these vertices are on the circumference of the circle or when the opposite angles will sum to 180 degrees. This is our circle theorem. Now we have two circle theorems, so let's see if we can apply them to a question. In this question it states, points A, B, C and D lie on the circle with the centre O. We know angle A to B to C is 48 degrees. We're asked to work out angle X and give a reason for our answer. And we're also asked to work out angle ADC and give a reason for our answer. See if you can try this question and press pause if you need. Reading the question, we can see we have an angle at the centre. So therefore, x must be 48 multiplied by 2, giving us 96 degrees for the angle x. This is because the angle at the centre is twice the angle at the circumference. Now, part b wants us to work out angle ADC. You might be able to see our cyclic quadrilateral. So therefore, Angle ADC is 180 degrees subtract the 48, giving 132 degrees. This is because opposite angles of our cyclic quadrilateral sum to 180 degrees. Now let's stretch ourselves a little more. Here we're using an angle fact alongside our two circle theorems. This angle fact states that if we were to form a triangle, Using two radii, the triangle would be isosceles. This is not a circle theorem, but is a key angle fact, and it's referred to many times in circle theorem questions. So now we have two circle theorems and one key angle fact. Let's apply them to our last exam question in this tutorial. This question states that points A, B, C and D are points on the circle with a centre O. We know the angle D to A to B is 75 degrees and we know angle D to B to C is 27 degrees. The question wants us to work out angle O to D to C and we must give reasons for our answer. See if you can try this question and pause if you need. You have all the circle theorems and the key angle fact needed to tackle this question. You may have spotted the angle at the centre. So therefore, angle DOB is 75 multiplied by 2, giving us angle DOB to be 150 degrees because the angle at the centre is twice the angle at the circumference. 
Now let's see if we can spot another circle theorem or key angle fact. You may notice we have two radii. Therefore, the length DO and OB are the same, so we know angle ODB is the same as OBD. To work this out, you simply do 180, subtract your 150, and divide by 2, giving us an angle of 15 degrees for angle ODB. And this is because triangle ODB is isosceles because of our two radii. Now, you may have also spotted another circle theorem. We have a cyclic quadrilateral. So this allows us to work out angle D to C to B, which is 180 subtract our 75, giving angle DCB to be 105 degrees. This is because opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral sum to 180 degrees. Now let's see if we can work out angle BDC. Well, given we have a triangle, it would be 180 degrees, subtract our 105, subtract our 27, giving us angle B to D to C to be 48 degrees, because the sum of angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. Given the question wanted us to find ODC, all we have to do is sum our 48 degrees and our 15 degrees. This will give us angle O to D to C to be 63 degrees. So, in summary, we've gone through two circle theorems and one key angle fact. Ensure to watch the next tutorial for more circle theorems and exam questions. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.